Hi, welcome back to the Atlas Search Scene. This is episode seven, Query Analytics. Query Analytics is the ability to track the queries that are being issued to your Atlas Search cluster and provide reports for the most used queries and queries that return zero results. Uh, this is important because your users are using your search system and they're seeing search results, but are the search results they're seeing the best ones to display for your particular business, for the user's experience and so on. So uh, it's very important to have some insight into the queries that are being issued. So let's take a look. Uh, first things first, in order to leverage the query analytics capabilities, you need an M10 instance or higher. The free tiers don't support the query analytics capability. So what we can do is take a look at uh, the query analytics documentation here. It is a preview feature, so these types of things may change and um, hopefully improve over time here. So we're going to see this query analytics being a very useful uh, capability moving forward. Uh, let's take a look at the analytics from my particular cluster. I've been running this cluster for the last uh, month or so and been generating uh, queries almost on a daily basis. Sometimes I let my generator run a little too long, which you'll see uh, through the graph. So you come over here to the search tab in the Atlas UI and go to the query analytics section. And you can see that the report shows um, a report here for all tracked search queries. So these are all the queries that have been coming into my cluster over the last seven days um, I've selected here. And I can change the, the visibility to the last 30 days, 90 days, or a custom range here. And see the number of uh, requests that I'm getting you know, effectively per day in this case. And I can see the top search terms, look at that. And then I can also see a report of queries with no results. So um, queries that are being issued that literally return zero documents. Um, this is very important, especially if you're, you know, you're driving your business through your search interface and users are doing searches and they're not finding any results. We need to correct that so that um, the users are actually finding things that are relevant for their queries. And we do that by taking a look at this particular query. Let's look at, look at the query over the last, say, 30 days here. And We'll pop this down and see what terms were used over the last 30 days that didn't retrieve any results. And you can see someone searched for Keanu. Uh, they misspelled Keanu, um, but we can kind of tell that that's what they were searching for. So using that and, and, and trying to improve the results, one of the things that you want to do when you look at these analytics reports is figure out a way to improve that particular query. And we can do that in a number of ways. We can change our analysis process so that the matching is a, a little bit looser, or we can um, provide synonyms or other types of things to uh, improve the findability of that particular term, depending on what that those search terms happen to be. So in this particular case, we can see the user made a, a reasonable typo on Keanu Reeves' first name here. What we want to do is leverage that feedback and improve this particular result. So let's hop over to Compass and take a look at um, a particular query here where I'm um, first I, I fixed it here. Let me just show you what it's like without the synonyms. We have a query for Keanu in the cast field and we'll highlight that too just for good measure. And we see we get no results found for this. Now we can add uh, synonyms into the mix by placing um, this operator here and see that we say synonyms and then we give it the name of a configuration that's in our index configuration and I've created one called cast synonyms and I'll show you that in just a minute. So once I add my synonyms to my query I get matches. So I search for a misspelled Keanu and then I can see that it actually highlighted the name of Keanu Reeves here by looking at the highlighting of the cast field. And I can see that it said Keanu is a hit for this misspelled term. So that's synonyms in action. Let me show you how those synonyms are set up. So we'll bounce back over to the Atlas UI 
and we'll go to our index overview and then look at the JSON editor so you can see the configuration of the synonyms. The synonyms are down here at the bottom and there is a configuration that says we're going to use a collection called cast underscore synonyms. I also gave that my name of my synonym mapping. That name is what you use in the text operator to pick up the synonyms that are defined in this particular collection. And for analysis uh, purposes, we need to specify the same analyzer that is used against the fields that we're going to be querying here. So we say leucine standard, which is what we're using for the cast field. Now that collection cast synonyms, I had to create that collection. Um, there is some documentation that will point you to that will show you how to set that collection up. Let me just show you what that collection looks like over here. So within my inflix sample inflix database, I added the cast synonyms collection. This cast synonyms collection is set up this way where we have an equivalency mapping for two terms. We have Keanu spelled correctly and Keanu spelled the way that our zero reports told us uh, to do. And now we have improved the relevancy of our system by having a mapping that uh, satisfies our user's intent.